The Electric Light Orchestra were really the first band I guess I became a fan of. To hear a record like Out of the Blue, which I had to talk my parents into buying me, you know, from the local Woolworths, you know, it was quite expensive, a double album, you know. And in fact, if I remember the copy I had, I guess all copies came with a, a spaceship that you put together. It wasn't only a musical experience, it was a very tactile, physical experience, and it was something that you really treasured. And as a 10 year old kid, of course, all that stuff had a massive impact on me, you know. I'm 10 years old, I'm reading on the record sleeve, you know, uh, all music and lyrics by, produced by, all by one guy, Jeff Lynne. And this guy was responsible for this magical musical journey, this magical musical experience where every track kind of took you somewhere else. And I totally fell in love with that. And I guess at that point, I, I kind of subconsciously fell in love with the idea of being that person, being that kind of auteur. So that record was a massive, massive sort of epiphanal moment for me at the age of, you know, 10 years old. I think there's a case with regard to Prince to say, arguably the most gifted pop musician ever. This guy's an auteur too, in the sense that he writes, produces and performs most of his music, but he's also a phenomenal dancer. You know, he's got a very strong sense of style and, and the kind of aesthetics presentation are important to him too. I think what was really interesting about Prince, in, at a time in the sort of early 80s when things were becoming, shall we say, more generic, here's a guy that came along who seemed fearless when it came to combining different forms of music. You know, he's borrowing as much from Jimi Hendrix as he was from James Brown, you know, as much from electronic music as he was from singer-songwriters, you know. So you had an album like Sign of the Times, which was is almost like the living embodiment of creativity and musicianship. It just pours out of them. And he, I mean, he, in the 80s, he just seemed to be on a roll. He just could do no wrong. Tears for Fear Songs in a Big Chair was one of those albums that when I was growing up was almost impossible not to discover, you know, because this is an album that was massive. But it was incredibly smart, incredibly sophisticated. I mean, everyone knows these songs, you know, they're, they're familiar. But I think what some people don't necessarily acknowledge sometimes is they are brilliant productions. Sonically, they are extraordinary. And I had the honour of, of remixing it uh, last year into surround sound. Sometimes that can detract from the magic, you know, because you, you find out too much about how they made the record. But that's a record that's actually, when I finished the project, I had even more admiration for it, you know. It's a very complex but beautifully put together production. Mm -hmm. 